Hey folks, my name is Jen, and today we are going to do something a little bit different. <laughs> because today we are going to talk about my favorite video game of all time. I totally understand if this video is not for everyone, if it's not like particularly interesting to you, because this is after all a bookish channel, and I am bookish, <laughs> and I usually talk about things relating to uh, books or authors or, you know, just book related, library related things. <laughs> but I do have some interests outside of reading and writing and making these videos. So, um, part of my goals for this year was maybe sprinkling in some of my other interests, just kind of here and there, not changing up my channel at all. It is about very largely still a bookish channel, but just figured it would be kind of fun to incorporate some of my other interests kind of randomly. I am not, nor have I ever considered myself to be a gamer. <laughs> Frankly, I've never been really good at video games or found a lot that I actually enjoy, mostly probably because I'm really bad at them. <laughs> I remember distinctly being like 10, maybe 11 years old and still unable to get past the first level on Sonic the Hedgehog on my Sega Genesis. Meanwhile, my four-year-old cousin comes to visit and he basically sits down and slammed through the level so fast I basically figured he was some type of baby genius. Overall, video games have just mostly been a source of frustration and sometimes even embarrassment for me rather than anything that's entertaining. Growing up I was just kind of a little bit embarrassed that there were some things that my peers were super good at and super into and I was either not exposed to them or didn't really enjoy them that much. I don't know. Video games was basically one of those things. That is until I was introduced to like very specific types of games, mostly like low stakes kind of games. Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing are pretty low stakes and overall really kind of cute and kind of wholesome. And they really don't require any of the skills that other video games might require that I am really bad at and don't have. <laughs> if you had asked me several years ago, what my favorite video game was, I would probably have said Animal Crossing New Leaf or even the latest incarnation New Horizons. But my answer ultimately changed in 2021 when my husband, trying to find a game that I would enjoy, suggested a first person exploration game called What Remains of Edith Finch. The game follows the story of teenaged Edith Finch, who has returned to her ancestral home after having left seven years before. As she explores the house and tries to learn more about her mysterious and quirky family and determine, are the Finches cursed? If you know me, you know that I'm a bit nosy. A game in which you are following a teenage girl exploring her family's like strange abandoned house and uncovering secrets about her family members. Oh yeah, I am all about that. It starts with you on a boat opening Edith Finch's journal through which you enter her narration and the story. The house appears through the trees like a janky, eerie tower. Rooms were added over time as the family grew, creating an almost chimera-like building, an amalgamation that has as much character as the people who lived in it. Each room is like a window into that character, who they were, what they loved, and also their tragic death. Edie, Edith's great-grandmother, over time memorialized each member of her family after they'd passed. It became a part of their rooms, like each theme that was in there from the ocean to trains to astronauts, cowboys, animals. In some ways, the house kind of reminded me of my grandparents' house. Set back from the road, up a long drive, you can like see it through the trees as you go by or when when you're like driving up the driveway there's a few bedrooms kind of spread out and all of the rooms are like stuffed full of photo frames and trinkets and books and memories though my family are mostly still living and there's no curse on them as 
far as I know. I guess that's where comparisons kind of end. <laughs> but from the descriptions and the furniture, the look of the house, the vibe of it, the like way things were all kind of set up, some of the items in it, I ended up feeling like a real connection to the setting. I too had gone delving into closets as a nosy little kid. I went through drawers and dug through photo albums trying to learn more about family both living and dead and maybe that's what made this game so intriguing and kind of personal to me as I explored. I love the structure of the game, the way the words sometimes fly across the screen like they are being written um, which they kind of are as you're reading through Edith's journal. Uh, sometimes the words look like they're being blown away by the wind or they're affected by the setting itself. At one point words slide up a chimney, at another they shatter. Visually it is also just plain gorgeous. The prettiest setting I have ever seen in a video game. While I don't play them usually, I am a couch watcher of the games my husband plays. The hours tick by as you explore the house, day turning to night, and some of the lights of the abandoned house slowly come on around you as Edith becomes enlightened to the truth behind the secrets of her mysterious and unfortunate family. When you pause in your exploration, looking out windows or across the beach as you walk along, you can't help but be struck by how stunning everything looks. Melancholic maybe, but also incredibly beautiful. The way each character's story is told is also visually striking. I think Barbara, Edith's great aunt, uh, her story is one of the most unique, being partially told through comic book form. Edith's brother Lewis's is told through a fairy tale, both fitting to the characters but both also handled in a devastating but careful way as they are both rather violent ends. Each family member's death is tragic, but treated in such a careful way, metaphors being used, the visuals gorgeous but heartbreaking. But each is done in such a manner that leaves them sad but not sensational. This is not done for like a gore factor or anything like that. It's just poignant. The story being told itself is so well done, the way some lines just like hit hard. like reading a book, when something written there makes you catch your breath from the emotion in it, this game drops some lines throughout that can make you, like, controller and all, reel back in your seat like you've been physically hit. One such line came early in the game when Edith has just entered the house and is looking around the kitchen, saying that it feels like she's coming home. That's followed up by, but instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Holy shit. Later on, she says, what kind of a family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? There are others that were powerful, especially the ending, but I don't want to give any spoilers away. Also throughout, the music also adds to the story as well, fitting in with certain scenes, um, oftentimes this melancholic lullaby, which seems tied to the whole family, but was featured uh, in having something to do with Barbara is, yeah, just really sets the scene as well. I think that the deaths are probably the hardest part of this game overall. Mostly tragic accidents or freak happenstances, and as you play the game, you do so through each person's eyes, seeing their end before it happens in some cases. There were a couple that I anticipated what was going to happen before it did, and that was kind of hard. <laughs> and this makes it all the more difficult, as to reach the end of the story, you have to essentially drive these characters to their deaths. Your exploration into their past forces you to relive their ends, which is pretty dark, I will admit, but also kind of fits in with the Finches. They are a family obsessed with death, their own unlucky family curse which has followed them for years. Begging the question, are the Finches actually cursed or is their morbid obsession with death and the past partially causing misfortune, like a self-fulfilling prophecy? I don't know if I've sold this game to you at all. I'll, I've probably made it sound incredibly sad which it is, but it is also incredibly beautiful. Not just the stunning visuals or the way it carefully points you in the right directions to complete the game, making it 
pretty easy for beginner gamers, but also the way it is written itself. This game hit me so hard. I still think about it, and I played it like three years ago. But every so often a scene will pop into my head, or I'll wonder about a detail, or I'll hear one of the pieces of music and be back in it, or I might wish for a creepy quirky house full of secrets to live in. Maybe I love this game so much because I got personally invested in it. Maybe because it involves being nosy, <laughs> or because you are searching for truth, or because it's a beautiful but eerie setting. Maybe I just like the dark morbid bits. Or maybe it's because if this was a book, it would have made it onto my top favorite reads of all time. Like my favorite books, this game is full of secrets and mysteries, horror and family, and it's touched me deeply. It is the only video game that's made me cry, so maybe that's why it ended up my favorite as well. Anyways, this is my favorite game ever. Uh, I know people know about it, but I want even more people to know about it and to experience it, because it is just absolutely gorgeous. It involves death, so, uh, you know, check out any trigger warnings if you're particularly sensitive to certain things before you play it or watch a playthrough. Those are also up here on YouTube, but I really recommend playing it first yourself because it's a lot more impactful if you yourself are playing it. But if this has intrigued you at all, please play it. <laughs> It is supposed to take like an hour and a half, I believe. I think it took me about three hours, but I don't play that many games. And also I looked at like everything. I walked around and looked at everything I could possibly look at. So that's probably why it took me longer. The game was made by indie game developer Giant Sparrow. You can play it on the PS4, PS5, Windows, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Per Wikipedia, it's considered an example of video games as an art form, which I can't agree with more. Any photos that I have shared over the course of this video, I found them all on Google. I don't own them. Um, anything to do with the game is owned by, like, Giant Sparrow, obviously. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much, that's my favorite game of all time. Um, I hope you check it out if this has intrigued you because it's just really good. I hope that you found this video interesting. Um, I will probably, like I said, be sprinkling more random videos about things that I find interesting outside of books here and there. Um, if that's interesting to you. Um, let me know. Also, let me know what's how you feel about video games. Are you like a gamer? Do you not really play that many? What's your favorite game? Um, if you heard of What Remains of Edith Finch before, let me know too. Um, I know that people know of it and it won some big acclaim at the time um, when it came out in like 2017, but it's not one that I hear about all of the time, so yeah, just wanted to talk about it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for always watching. If you are new here and would like to subscribe, please consider doing so. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.